Guys, you won't believe it. YOLO R has just been released and it's better and faster than YOLO V4, Scaled YOLO V4, YOLO V5 and PP YOLO V2. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get YOLO R which stands for you only learn one representation working on both GPU and CPU on images and real-time video using a webcam. All this right here, right now, no time to waste, let's get started. Now if YOLO R is something new to you, that's because it is. At the time of recording this video, I've written a very nice article which you can see at the link down below in which you can learn how YOLO R is unique and better than all the other YOLO architectures. I will however have a video version of this paper review right up here when it gets launched. I suggest that you watch it to get an understanding of YOLO R and then come back right here to get it running on images and video. Okay, so if you are ready, let's get into it. But before we do, I will have a free mini course for YOLO R in the link down below. And if you are interested in the pro course on YOLO R, it will be available soon for pre-order. So make sure that you are subscribed with that bell icon to get notified because you won't want to miss this. YOLO R is going to be the biggest thing in computer vision since YOLO V4. It's proven that YOLO R is better than its predecessors. I'm going to be running this on Windows 11, it will work on 10 as well, but I'll have another video soon on Google Colab and Linux. Alright, so let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so in order to start, we need to go over to the Vision Store, which you can find at www.augmentedstartups.info forward slash Vision Store. So over here, you can find a wide variety of projects. So we have one on face detection, pose estimation, hand detection. There's also one on Zoom virtual background where you can create your own virtual background or blur it out. And you can also create your own computer vision web app using Streamlit. But for now, we just focus on one thing and one thing only, which is YOLO R object detection. So right over here, you can just click on free and it'll take you to the page. Now what you presented with is the YOLO R tutorial page. It'll give you a brief description of what it's about, as well as the outcome that you can expect. If you want to understand the architecture of YOLO R, you can click right over here and you can read my paper review, which is on Medium. So back to the tutorial, you'll need some requirements, a PC or laptop, of course, a webcam if you want to do the live detections, and you'll also need a GPU. Now, if you want to run this on a GPU, you would obviously need an NVIDIA graphics card. Note that this will not work on an Intel or AMD or any other brand of graphics card. This will only work on NVIDIA CUDA supported graphics cards. And don't forget that you need Python and Conda installed. Now onto the implementation. There's four steps to get this running. So step one, make sure that you have all the prerequisites installed. Now for both GPU and CPU installations, ensure that you have PyCharm community installed, not only for this tutorial, but for future YOLO R tutorials. You're also going to need Anaconda with Python. So you can click right over here, open link in new tab, and you can install Anaconda and PyCharm. Now, if you're going to run this on a GPU, you need to ensure that you have the latest NVIDIA drivers. If you open it up, you can install it right over here on this page, as well as the CUDA toolkit 11.1. Ensure that all the versions that you install are according to what you're installing in this tutorial to avoid any mishaps along the way. Now I'm not going to cover the installation of the prerequisites because they're quite straightforward. Instead, we're going to focus mostly on the installation of YOLO R. Next, we need to download all the files. Okay, so once you've downloaded all the files, you can unzip it and go into the folder. This is the folder that we're going to use. Now just note that these are the files are from the original repo. Let me go to that repo. If you go type in YOLO R, it's by Wong Kin Yu. And you can check out this GitHub repo about what it's about, how to use it and everything. Now what's different about this folder is that we already have the weights, right? So you don't have to download it from somewhere else. It's already included. And we have the correct requirements files for both CPU and GPU. In the main Python file, which is called detect.py, I've also included a small script so that we're able to display our frame rate. We're going to go over to step two. So depending on what configuration you want to do, you can either choose between the GPU installation, which is at step 2.1, or step 2.2, which is for the CPU installation. Now, because I want to utilize my GPU, I'm going to select GPU installation right over here. Cool. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our Conda environment. 
So you can either copy it over here or tap it out. I'm going to tap it out. Say Conda, create, dash dash name, YOLO R dash GPU. Press enter. And then if you press Y, if it prompts. If it prompts, just say yes or Y for yes. And let it execute. Great. Next, we're going to say Conda activate our virtual environment. So YOLO R dash GPU. So now that our Conda environment has been activated, let's go ahead and install all our dependencies. So the first thing that we need to install is PyTorch, right? So we're going to copy this command because it's a long command. We're just going to copy and paste it. Press enter. And wait for the installation to complete. Right, next we need to install Scython. So we're going to type in pip install dash capital U Scython. Okay, next we need to install PyCoco tools. So let's just copy this and paste. Great, so I think we have most of our prerequisites for our requisites. <laughs> so now we're going to install the requirements txt now we have two of them one is for the gpu and the other is for the cpu so depending on what you have i'm going to install the gpu so we're going to say pop install dash r requirements dash gpu dot txt press enter and let it do its thing now if you just do it straight like how I did, it's going to give you an error saying no file or directory. That means we need to go into our directory of our YOLO R folder. So I'm just going to copy this. Say change directory. Put that folder over there. Now if you're doing this on a different drive, you're going to need to change your drives first. So do that. I'm just going to clear this out. And now we can go ahead and install our requirements. Now, because I've installed all of these dependencies, it's going to use the cache versions of these dependencies. Okay, so to get this to run on an image, we can just copy this over here and then paste it. Now, if you're running this on a CPU, you'll just delete that and put this as CPU. Otherwise, you can select it as our first GPU, which is zero. Press enter and let it run. Now while that is running, now what's actually happening in the background is that we are looking for our images, which is in the inference folder. And it says over here, images. And it's going to be analyzing this image over here, which is horses.jpg. Like if you've seen in our, if you go to our command, it says inference images horses.jpg. Now, if you want to try something different, you can go back here and you can specify another image that you'd want to use. So for example, we can use cars.jpg. But before we do that, let's go check out our output image. So if you go to output over here, you can see that we have detected all of the horses, which is very nice. Let's try some other images out. So let's go with the cars one, right? Okay, let's check it out. Wow, look at that. It detected all of the cars. Like, look at that. It's none of the cars are missing and all of the cars are actually labeled like properly. Like they have a very high confidence rate. Look at that. Let's uh, give it a bit more challenge, shall we? Let's try out this image with a lot of cars. As you can see, there's a lot of cars. Let's see how well it does. So that one is called cars2. Okay. 
Our image has been cooked. Let's go to our output. Wow. <laughs> oh my God, this is crazy. Look at that. Each and every car has been labeled. Wow, I can't, I, I can't believe this. I can't believe this. Look at that. This is crazy. Even the car's right here in the corner, it's detecting it quite well. Let's push it a little bit more. Let's try it from the top view. Now just keep in mind with respect to the top view, our model hasn't been trained with respect to cars from the top view, so it might detect something else. If you train it just for top view of cars, then it will obviously classify it better, but let's see what, what we get now. All right. Sure, look at that. Even though it was the incorrect class, right? You can see we're detecting cell phones. If we actually train our model for cars from the top view, it'll classify it correctly. But even though we misclassified, look how it has detected all of the cars, like basically all of them. Like this is so much better than Yolo V4. Like Yolo V4 had some missing cars. This one is like perfect. Like, and in terms of getting the bounding boxes just to fit the cars or, or the objects just right, you know, it's like a snug fit. This is very impressive, I must say. Let's try with something else. Let's try with some people. So let's go into crowd. Okay, if you open this up, that is actually quite impressive. Now, it's detecting a whole lot of people and just keep in mind that there's a lot of people in the background that are blurred out. So I don't expect the detector to detect each and every one of them, like this blob over here. I don't expect to detect it that person over there or that person over there, but it does really well with like people like in front, right? People at the back, it could get that over there, like the blurred person there, but, but that's only if you train it for blurred people. This is really impressive. Let's try our final image, Crowd2. We are putting it through its paces. Okay, this is okay. It could have done a better job with all these other people, but I'm sure if you trained it to detect all those people, it will work quite well. But just using the pre-trained model, it detects people not just people only, but also a backpack. It detects a handbag. Um, yeah, and this is mostly for the people that are close to the camera. Right, so let's try it out on a webcam. So in order to do that, we just go to step four, which will give us a command for activating the webcam. Now it's very simple. You don't really need to copy and paste the code. You just press up and then we just need to change our source from the image to the source of the webcam which is, we delete all of this, change this to zero to use the video capture device. Uh, let's get a webcam over here. I've got mine. And let's test it out. Press enter. Now, some people say they have problems with the built-in webcam camera. I highly recommend you buy an external camera, most likely Logitech. It just works in all cases, whether it's augmented reality or if it's computer vision. It just works. So if you want to get the webcam that I'm using, you can just click this link over here where it says get. Oops. So you can just click this link over here where it says get. Cool. So as you can see, we are able to run this. It's say between 10 and 15 frames a second. It's doing quite a decent job. Look at that. Like it's detecting, okay, pot plant. Let's see, we've got a cup, we're detecting cell phone, a mouse, and a keyboard. Let's see my cell phone. It says my cell phone is a laptop. It is actually sort of a laptop. If you look at the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, uh, it's basically a laptop. <laughs> so it's, it's detecting a cell phone. Oh, this is like very impressive, like bottle. Detecting me very well. One day I'll train it to detect my drone. My keyboard is detecting it as a bit, but obviously it has been trained for keyboards. 
handbag. He's got a bed there, a vase. So the speaker here, it'll say as a bottle or as a traffic light because it hasn't been trained on that. Huh. This is actually very impressive. I mean, it's even detecting a laptop within my computer monitor. That's, that's like very impressive. If you lay down here, you can see at different angles, it's doing very well. Detecting my cup over here, my keyboard, bottle one, bottle two, and my cup. Yeah, I'm really impressed. So if you've enjoyed this tutorial, I highly recommend that you check out the vision store at augmentedstartups.info forward slash vision store. And this is where we will have a variety of projects that you can check out. If you are interested in enrolling in the full YOLO R course, there will also be a link down below and there'll be a free mini course that you can check out. There's a lot that we can do with YOLO R and we've just scratched the surface. Also, don't forget to like and comment to this video and also subscribe if you want to learn more on YOLO R. You won't want to miss this. So YOLO R just got released, but is it better and faster than YOLO V4, Scaled YOLO V4, YOLO V5 and PP YOLO V2? Well, in order to answer this question, we first had to review the groundbreaking academic paper by Chen Ya Wang and team. And this is to find out exactly what YOLO R is, what's unique in its architecture, how it works, and what results they achieved, as well as how it compares to other state-of-the-art models. 